Hi, we're going to take our drawing to the next step. I'm hoping that you are about finished with your drawing and that you have um, used your pen to focus on the edges that you want to emphasize. One of the things that is really important is to not worry about if you're not quite there. What I want to talk to you today about is how important it is to use overlapping and to have a full page of images, okay? So when I look at my drawing, my art palette overlaps my heart cookie. My paintbrush overlaps my art palette. My paintbrush also overlaps my little gondola car here that's going across the page. So I want to look at where I have empty space. I might go ahead and add more images behind these gondola cars to create overlapping. I might come down here to this corner by my cinnamon roll and add overlapping. And I think that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm starting my idea with overlapping by using pencil, not my pen. And since my idea was about the Fresno Fair, when I think about when I eat at the fair, the tables where you sit down and eat are often covered by tablecloths made of um, checkered patterns, red and white checkered pattern tablecloths, and they're plastic because fair eating, part of what makes it delicious is that it is messy. So now that I have my lines in in pencil, and they're okay, and I'm happy with them, I'm adding to, or Con developing to a greater degree my overlapping. And I could use my ruler, but pen and ink sometimes smudges, so if I take my time and focus, and I'm following through so that my lines come out on the other side, remember I've marked it in pencil, and remember, when we're working with pen and ink, I'll ink today and erase extra pencil lines tomorrow. Okay, so now I have my horizontal lines. It's a little bit awkward to do the lines the other way, but remember, our paper is not turned, uh, is not glued to the table, so I can turn my paper, and that makes it much easier. Once I have the lines established, then I can start to think about how I want to fill in or develop the value or the contrast that I want to develop also. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so on a, the tablecloth, I might just start here. And I can always make the pattern darker value. I'm going to skip one, but I can't make it lighter. So I want to start out, I'm going choosing to start out by using parallel lines and filling every other square. So at first it might not look like that much, but it's going to provide value contrast and it's going to provide overlapping and both of those are things that I need to make my drawing more interesting and more complete. One of the things that we talked about last time was that as I'm working, it's hard to kind of get a sense of how it's turning out. So I, once in a while, have to hold it up. And yes, that's creating my effect. Well, 
I'm working, it's also important to pay attention to what I'm doing. Maybe you've noticed sometimes it's hard to work and talk at the same time, so I want to pay attention so I'm not putting the ink in a space that I don't want ink. Okay, all right, so I would continue to develop this area. This area with the flower pot and the spade is not very finished. I've worked on the handle a little bit. The top of the flower pot is going to be light, but I need to separate the dirt from the edge of the pot. So I have to decide if this is light, what's gonna be darker, the dirt or the pot? Well, I want there to be some value difference between the top of the pot and the inside of the pot. So I'm going to use some vertical lines there. I will have to develop the light and shadow on my shovel a little bit uh, on the metal part, okay? And now I'm going to do the seeds next because the seeds are going to remain unshaded. And so they're going to stand out. And that means I want to do the dirt with some kind of texture. So I can think about the kinds of pen and ink textures we've been working with. What texture would look more like dirt? To me, this one looks like grass, so I don't wanna do that. Uh, maybe this kind of scribbly one, or maybe this, I like this kind of scribbly texture here. Now again, if I'm not sure what I want to do, I'm not going to start it with ink first. I'm going to try some things out with pencil first to make sure that it's what I want to do before I commit myself to the ink. And this kind of scribbly texture is going to provide contrast with the seeds and I want to be careful that I'm not going over them. And it will also provide contrast with my other pen and ink marks. And maybe I will need to come back and outline the seeds with a darker line or create more value, a darker value with the dirt around them. But if I'm not sure what I'm doing, remember I'm going to hold my drawing up and yes, that's coming along. Okay, here on my donut, I've kept the frosting light on top and I've started to create some value difference between the end of the donut going back away from where it's missing with a bite, but also up from the bottom. So where is their light? Where is their shadow? How can I make it look 3D? On my cookie, this was a top. This is the jelly filling. So again, it's darker value, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that right now. Here I've started to develop the three-dimensional quality of the artist's palette. The brush is kind of boring, so I might come in and shade some of the edges of the brush sections, add a little vid visual interest, add a little texture, add a little value. And so what I want you to do for this next time is to first fill up your paper with images. Make sure that you have most of the, pace, the, most of the space full. 
If you have a lot of empty space, try to figure out what you can add. So this has a lot of empty space. When I look at my other drawing, there are at least 20 images here, and this is going to become the French flag. So that would be 21. And again, you'll notice most many of the shapes overlap some other part of the drawing. Okay, so overlapping is critical. That's number one. Number two, if I forgot about overlapping, the best way to do that is by adding an object behind. Okay, I started with my suitcase, I added the front wheels and then it seemed a little empty. So I made the suitcase three dimensional by adding the back and I added my back wheels. So I need to make the wheels separate also so they stand out from each other. Okay, and so I want you to work towards building up that value on each object. Try to have them look three-dimensional. And that's where we'll go for now. Next time we'll talk about how to unify our drawing.